What is going on garden fans? Welcome back to the Permaculture Homestead. Today's episode is a viewer choice video. Somebody had asked me a really good question about the animals that I have back here and how I incorporate them into the food forest. So today is a video about animal husbandry and poop. Uh, come on back. Let's have a mature adult talk about poop and yeah, enjoy the journey. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell, and slap like right now. Give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us out, believe it or not, and we need all the help we can get with YouTube out there um, holding the little gardeners down. I uh, appreciate y'all watching. Come on back. Enjoy the journey. Okay, garden fans. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking a lot about poop. And more specifically, I'm going to be touching on the animal systems I have back here, how I incorporate them into the food forest, and just how that all works here in a suburban environment. Uh, for reference purposes, I do live in Zone 8, South Carolina, suburban area. I live in typical builder quality plastic paneled home with plastic fencing all the way around the property. I live on about 2,000 square feet. That's about 50 feet by about 40 feet. So with this space, I am using rabbits in a tractoring system. This is my rabbit tractor setup here I got going on. Now, this is May. She is our New Zealand white. She has been here for five years now. She has kindled for us twice. And currently she is my weeder and my fertilizer. How this works is very simple. I have an old dog kennel that I flipped upside down. So here is the plastic bottom that keeps her dry. There's a blanket over the top that also gives her shade. And believe it or not, she never gets wet in here. How this works is very simple. What I will do is move the cage over an area with heavy weeds, kind of like I have it over it right now. And what she does is her job. She's gonna eat all the weeds. She's gonna scratch down deep in there, pull up some of the, uh, the grassy runners that get deep in the ground that you can't always pull out. And then she'll poop, she'll leave her manure, and I will move the cage on down to the next patchy spot of weeds. So here, a few feet away, is kind of what the place looks like after it's been cleared out. Just a nice little square of clean land. She's scratched, she's left holes, she's gotten deep in there. She's left her manure all over the place. And this is my fertilizer for the vegetables that I will be planting in this area. We're coming into spring. This plot of land is now, in essence, prepared for me to plant. And this is how I use my rabbit in the food forest here to kind of close some loops. That's what permaculture is about. Closed loop systems, closing loops, not letting anything go to waste. And as you can see, I have tons of ground cover weeds all over the place, and none of it goes to waste. At this time of year, I am taking most of these weeds, pulling them up by hand. They're really simple. And these go to my chickens, which is another layer of my food forest and another system that I have here. So if you live on even just a thousand square feet, I would totally suggest you get chickens. Chickens have been the best thing that I have done here as a gardener or going into this permaculture thing. Uh, the animal husbandry, I have been most rewarded by chickens. Now my chicken system is uh, pretty pretty detailed, pretty in-depth. I'll, I'll go for, uh, through it here. It starts with a coop. We have a chicken coop. Okay, that coop is in a run area, a small run here that is fenced off on one side, fenced off right here. It's totally covered over with wire, and it's got a tarp over the top of it. So I've got an enclosed coop inside of a basically zone one. That's inside of a run area that's totally protected and covered off. And that's for them in case they ever feel unsafe. If there's a hawk in the area, they generally scurry back into the coop and run area to stay protected from predators. Uh, the coop itself, I utilize a deep mulch layering, deep mulch system. Um, I'm basically using paper, paper filings, shredded paper as the bedding and they'll poop on this and once a month I'll come out here and put more paper down and they'll poop on that and I'll do that every so often every month 
And in a couple months here, what I'm going to end up doing is raking all of this out and putting it out on the trees. This is my fertilizer. So this shredded newspaper and rabbit or chicken manure ends up composting here on site and it becomes the fertilizer for my trees as we're coming into spring. Now the chickens themselves, of course, come with eggs. Great byproduct, great system here. And it's a great source of protein for us, having chickens and eggs on a daily basis. So chickens, eggs, they're getting fertilizer from their poop. Uh, this, they have a larger run area that you can see here. It's also closed off. They can't jump over the fence. I clipped their wings. And as you can see, they pretty well de demolished any kind of ground cover back here. So there's no ground cover, no weeds whatsoever. And because of that, I kind of keep them back here a majority of the year. Five months out the year, what I'll let them do is basically free range out in the food forest to tear up all the weeds, to scratch, to manure. That's generally from July to January. And that's when they, that's seven months roundabout, believe it or not. And that's when they're cleaning out this place, getting it ready for spring. Right now, I'm not going to let them free range out here because I am preparing for screwing. I do want to grow vegetables back here and I am already direct seeding things that I don't want them to tear up. So instead of then coming out here to get the weeds, what I'll be doing from now until July is picking the weeds and giving them to them. Believe it or not, this also saves us on feed. I supplement the chickens with a pelletized feed, but for the most part, they're eating weeds for the majority of their diet. There's one more animal system I want to talk about, and that is my dogs. I own dogs. I have two rescue pit bulls, and both of them poop. And I don't just pick up that poop and throw it away. Believe it or not, I compost dog crap. And I've been composting dog crap for quite some time. And how this system works is pretty simple. I take an old bucket, we layer in some dog poop, and then we cover that up with the same shredded paper that I have in the chicken shed. And then I'll do that again. We'll layer down a good layer of poop. We'll get some brown. We'll get some greens. Greens are the poop. The browns are the paper. And I'm basically composting inside this bucket. This bucket will sit here for about six months. Eventually, as the temperatures get warmer, we're going to get black soldier fly to come in here, lay their larva. The larva will start to crawl out the bottoms of the bucket and those soldier fly larvae will feed my chickens. Okay, so dog poops, poop gets composted, compost turns into dirt for the plants, compost also produces uh, soldier fly larvae, which is protein for my chickens, which produce for me eggs. So, ergo, I guess you could say yes, I'm eating dog poop to some degree. Now, after these buckets have composted for six months, they're still not quite done yet. I will then dump these buckets out and compost them for another three months in the back of the property here. And that's the top of the property. I have a big composting stack back there that I'm working on. And that is generally where the dog poop bins go when they've been filled and they have sat for over six months. And I think that's it for the Animals Garden fan. That is my animal husbandry video for the day. Um, appreciate y'all coming along for this little trip. I didn't think I'd be talking about poop, but this is what we're talking about today. This is a natural part of gardening and animal husbandry, and I hope you enjoyed this. If y'all have any questions for me whatsoever, just leave it right down in the description, and I always, as always, try to answer all the questions. I appreciate y'all watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Keep in touch, and God bless.